Good afternoon friends. In the last lecture we have seen how to prove the limit x y tends to f a comma b f of x comma y is equal to l that is how to prove that uh, the double limit l is true or not for a given function of two variables at a given point. Today we are going to discuss uh, two methods of uh, proving that limit does not exist means how to check whether given, given limit does not exist there are two ways. So, for that first of all let us understand uh, that uh, what is the case for function of one variable and then I will explain for two variables. First of all consider limit x tends to a f x is equal to l in this limit of function of one variable you know that this x which is tending to a that means x is approaching the number a in two ways either x goes near and near to a from this direction that is from the left hand side of a or x goes near and near to a from the right hand side of a. So, there are only two possible directions uh, for which uh, we can take the values of x either x from the left hand side or from the right hand side x from the left hand side means either x is less than a or right hand side means x is greater than a and you know very well that if x is remaining less than a then we are calling it left hand limit of the function limit x tends to a minus f x is equal to l. And similarly, if x is greater than a, then we call it the right hand limit, limit x tends to a plus f x is equal to l. So, there are only two possible left limit and right limit according to the directions. Now, let us consider the case of uh, functions of two variables. <coughs> we have limit x comma y tends to a comma b of f of x comma y is equal to l. Now, what is a comma b? it is any point in R 2 means in the Cartesian plane. This is the Cartesian plane x or y and we have a point a comma b here. So, you can approach this point a in many ways you can go from this direction or you can go first horizontally where I am keeping y fixed and changing x and then vertically where wow, this y is changing and x is fixed. So, there are so many directions you can use some curve through which you can approach the number uh, uh, of the point a comma b. So, x comma y can tend to this point a comma b. So, here if you take any point x y on this curve then this curve is given by some equation it, it can be like this y is a function of x or you can say x is a function of y like this this can be written in the form x equal to psi y. So, you can use any curve or any path using which you can go near and near to the point a comma b and for all possible paths we must have the same limit because you know that uh, for a small neighborhood of the point a b which is always a rectangular neighborhood uh, from where whatever direction you try to approach this point a b the value of the limit l will be same ok. So, this there is one interesting result and uh, we are going to use the negation of that uh, converse of the result which you can see on your screen that uh, first the method the limit and the path if limit x comma y tends to a comma b f of x comma y is equal to l exist then it is independent of any path means either you take the function y is equal to phi of x or x is equal to psi of y if y is equal to phi of x means we have some function relation like y is equal to 2 x plus 3 y is equal to x square anything or y is equal to m x. So, this this, this way you, you can take any path y equal to phi x or x in terms of y x equal to psi of y for any path if the limit double limit exists then the value of the limit must be same. But the converse of this first remark or first uh, note is not true that means if the for different two different uh, two different paths if the limit is coming same then we cannot conclude that double limit x comma y tends to a b of f of, y, f of x comma y also exist. So, the converse of one is not true, but uh, if you take the negation of the converse it will be true as you can see on the next slide see what I have written is limit x comma y tends to a comma b f of x comma y depends upon the path y is equal to phi x or x equal to psi y then the double limit does not exist. Let us understand you know if this double limit exists then it is independent of path it is independent of any path in short we can write like this. So, we have two statements this is one statement this is another statement. So, we have p implies q is true 
whenever a p implies q is true, it is negates an or contra positive statement not q implies not p is also true. Means something like if today is Monday, then tomorrow is Tuesday, that is always true. And now the negative contra positive statement of this today is Monday implies tomorrow is Tuesday is if tomorrow is not Tuesday, then today cannot be Monday. So, let us use this contra positive of this statement k if this limit exists, then it is independent of path. What is the negation of this statement? That is not q, that is if the limit depends upon the path, depends upon the path, then this does not exist. That means, limit x comma y, the double limit x comma y tends to a comma b of f of x comma y does not exist. This limit does not exist. So, this is one way of proving that limit does not exist. Let us solve some problems based on this. You can see on your screen the first problem. I will use uh, this method to prove limit does not exist. Just look at the first example. The question is prove the following limit does not exist. Remember, these type of problems are important. Remember, I am going to show the first method how to prove limit does not exist. Here, the problem is limit x comma y tends to 0, 0 x minus y upon x plus y. See, let us consider one particular path. You know, we have to take our point is 0, 0 and we have to approach this point from any direction, this direction or this direction. So, I am taking one particular path, this path. What is this? This path, it is a straight line passing through origin. And we know the equation of a straight line passing through origin is y is equal to m x. So, you can see that this equation is of the form y equal to phi of x. So, let us choose this path and see what happens to this limit. So, in this kind of problem, first you observe this uh, expression of the function and then decide okay, which path should be taken. The main, <coughs> main technique is we substitute some path, some equation in such a way that uh, all x will be cancelled. If I substitute y in terms of x, then all x will be removed and you will get some value of the limit in terms of some constant and that constant is a changing constant, a arbitrary constant, something like this. If I take y equal to m x here, then I want to substitute this y equal to m x in this expression. So, all everything will be converted into x. So, it is something like a substitution, but we know in here in this double limit x tends to 0 and y tends to 0. So, what happens when y tends to 0? When y tends to 0 by putting y equal to 0 over here, we get x equal to 0 that means x is also tending to 0. So, this limit, this limit now I can write this is equal to limit x tends to 0 x minus what is y m x upon x plus m x which is equal to limit x tends to 0 you can see x is common 1 minus m and 1 plus m and when we are taking x tends to 0 means x is never equal to 0. So, I can cancel x from numerator and denominator and what I get is limit x tends to 0 1 minus m upon 1 plus m and limit of a constant is constant itself. So, final answer will be 1 minus m upon 1 plus m. Now, what is m here? It is this value it is arbitrary value of this constant. So, m belongs to r. If I take m equal to 1, I will get 1 minus 1 0 upon 2 that is 0. If I take m is equal to minus 1, I will get uh, sorry if I take m is equal to 3, then 1 minus 3 is minus 2 upon uh, 4. Okay. So, the value is changing for different values of m, but for different values of m you know you will get these different straight lines. See y is equal to x is this line, then y is equal to say 1 by 2 x, y equal to uh, 3 x and so on. So, you will get all the different paths and using these different paths, we are approaching to the point given. What is the point given here? It is 0, 0. So, using the different paths, we are approaching this 0, 0 and here we see okay, for all different paths, the value of the limit is depending upon uh, this path. For different paths, you will get different limit. Therefore, by that negation, if limit is depending on the path, it does not exist. So, after this we must write 
okay, this shows that this shows that the limit depends upon the path and hence it does not exist hence it does not exist okay so this is the first example answer is the limit does not exist remember we can prove only limit does not exist we cannot find the limit using this concept by taking different paths we cannot substitute here and find that okay, this will be the limit okay let us uh, consider the next problem on the screen it is <coughs> limit x comma y tends to 0 0 x raised to 4 y raised to 4 upon x square plus y raised to 4 whole raised to 3 okay let us consider this problem now again we think of see i want to prove that this limit does not exist so we think of a path which converts everything in uh, x or y okay see highest power of y is 4 here here also it is 4 but here x square is there so if i want to make this also into 4 then one can think like this see if i put y equal to mx let us see first of all by trial and error method if i put y equal to mx what will happen to this expression you will get x raised to 4 then mx raised to 4 upon x square mx raised to 4 cube okay you will get this expression and if you simplify this you will get m raised to 4 into x raised to 8 because x raised to 4 into x raised to 4 is x raised to 8 here you will get x square plus m raised to 4 x raised to 4 whole cube so from this two if i take x square common then raised to 3 is there so i will get m raised to uh, x raised to 6 outside uh, outside of this bracket and what remains in the bracket is this thing this will remain so now if i cancel then i will get this value okay <coughs> so one can think you can do uh, this kind of uh, work and see whether we are getting the required uh, say that expression or not so what you are getting is m raised to 4 upon 1 plus m raised to 4 x square whole cube so this is also a valid path okay by putting y equal to mx here i am getting uh, if i take limit as x tends to 0 this will be m raised to 4 upon 1 plus 0 so that is also a valid path but let us try some another path and see uh, what happens not always a straight line one can use some parabolic path also for example in this case to make this power same i am taking x is equal to say my square let us put x is equal to my square and if you put x equal to my square you know as x tends to 0 implies y also will tend to 0 so therefore this double limit x y tends to 0 0 x raise to 4 y raise to 4 upon x square plus y raise to 4 whole cube will be converted into limit y tends to 0 see i am putting x is equal to something in terms of y so it is this kind of function x is a function of y x is equal to psi of y so here you will get m y square whole raise to 4 y raise to 4 upon here m y square square plus y raise to 4 cube which is equal to limit y tends to 0 uh, what m raised to 4 here 2 for the 8 8 plus 4 is 12 so y raised to 12 you will get in the numerator and the denominator this is uh, m square y raised to 4 plus y raised to 4 whole cube so this will be the simplification further if you simplify you can write it as m raised to 4 y raised to 12 upon y raised to 12 m square plus 1 whole cube m square plus 1 whole cube see i have taken y raised to 4 outside but because of this power 3 i will get y raised to 12 so these two will be cancelled what remains is limit y tends to 0 m raised to 4 upon m square plus 1 whole cube right and this is a constant so limit of a constant is constant m raised to 4 upon m square plus 1 whole cube 
Okay. So, again for different values of m you will get this limit value different that means the limit is depending upon the path which path x equal to m y square this parabolic path. So, for different parabolic curve the value of this double limit will be different. So, this shows that this given limit depends upon the path chosen and therefore, it does not exist again by that third result. Now, let us consider the third problem. I will just explain ke how to choose different paths in different problems, so that you will have a practice of uh, thinking that which path should be taken. You can see on your screen uh, that second one, uh, sorry, third problem x is to 5 y upon x is to 10 plus y square. You think what can be taken as the path, so that it will be converted into uh, something which does not involve x or y. One can think that uh, if I take y is equal to m x raised to 5, y is equal to m x raised to 5, then everything will be converted into uh, say x. Let me write down the problem first. Limit x y tends to 0 0, x is to 5 into y upon x is to 10 plus y square. Okay. Let us solve. Here again I am taking y is equal to m x raised to 5, because if I write x raised to 5 here then 5 to the 10 and I can take x to 10 outside and again in the numerator it will give us x raised to 10 because of this x raised to 5. So, this way you should think that what path should be taken and now when we are going to substitute in place of y everything will be converted in terms of x. So, we have to think of this limit also as y tends to 0 what happens to x? x is also tending to 0 because of this relation. So, therefore, this limit which I will write simply limit whenever I write such thing it means this, this limit. So, this double limit will be converted into the single limit, single limit means limit of function of one variable. So, you will get x s to 5 m into x s to 5 upon x s to 10 plus m x s to 5 whole square. So, which gives you limit x tends to 0 m into x raise to 10 upon 